when we're engaged in rumination, we're really not in the present moment. We might engage in rumination because we're trying to motivate ourselves. Hi, this is Jim Brion, and welcome to this YouTube channel where we discuss all things mental health. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and also a licensed professional clinical counselor in Orange County, California. What I'm going to be talking about is a subject that I've touched on before and wanted to go a little deeper into it. And that's the problem that many of us struggle with, and it's called rumination. So rumination, first of all, the, the literal meaning of it, means to to chew on if you're familiar with you know farm life anyone who's been around cows may know that cows are a form of animal that are considered to be ruminants and if you've ever observed them you'll notice that cows will stand in a pasture and just chew and chew and chew and chew and chew all day long and that idea of rumination is something that we apply to our own thought processes rumination is sort of what happens when we get trapped into chewing and chewing and chewing on our own thoughts. We get stuck into repetitive, obsessive thought processes, thinking the same kinds of thoughts over and over and over again. And many people really struggle with breaking out of those patterns of rumination. Something important to recognize, though, is, you know, rumination can become a habit. And like any habit you can learn how to break out of it. Maybe controversial for some people, but to a great extent, rumination and our engaging in it turns out to be a choice that we make. And if we're not mindful, we're not even aware that we're making that choice. In one sense, rumination can kind of feel like scratching an itch. You know, it just, it, it might even feel good to just kind of like think and think and think and think and think about about whatever that issue is, but rumination can lead to anxiety disorders and can lead to depression. When we're engaged in rumination, we're really not in the present moment. And if we're ruminating about something that might go wrong in the future, that can create anxiety. And if we're ruminating about something that went wrong in the past, it can create sadness and depression in our and our mind can be like a pendulum swinging back and forth between the two, but that means that we're not actually fully here in the present moment. Rumination can really damage a person's self-esteem and self-confidence. And if you really start to believe some negative identity message that you're ruminating about can really attack your sense of yourself, can cloud your thinking and lead to indecision. When we think about rumination and how to deal with it, I think it's important to, to look at uh, metacognition. In other words, looking at and paying attention to the nature of our own thoughts. And if you notice how rumination starts, it often starts with what we think of as a trigger thought, a thought that triggers that rumination. And then once that trigger thought happens, we start to focus on it and run it through our mind again and again and again. Often a trigger thought is focused on the future or in the past. And once we start engaging with it, our mind is is off running, so to speak. Trigger thought might be something like, why do I feel this way? Or why did that happen? What did she mean when she said that? What did they think when I did that? And those types of trigger thoughts can start a pattern of rumination. Why didn't they call? I wonder if they don't like me anymore. Why wouldn't they like me anymore? Was it because of that thing? Oh my gosh, I can't. And the next thing you know is your mind is really kind of running with you. And there are various types of ruminations. Some of our ruminations are very self-critical. You know, addicts and alcoholics are said to be very ruminative, but they engage in something we think of as desired thinking ruminations, sort of fixating on what the next high is going to be like or fixating on, you know, finding their next their next drink. Another form of Rumination is preoccupation with other people and other people's thoughts, feelings, intentions, relationships. Um, we get caught up into a cognitive distortion that we think of as mind reading. A lot of this type of rumination has to do with our attachment style and even unmet needs in childhood, maybe childhood trauma. And doubt is another trigger for rumination, especially people that struggle with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and their need for certainty. They can get caught up in their mind just trying to 
be absolutely certain of something rather than embracing the truth that there really isn't such a thing as total certainty in life. One of the problems with rumination is that we might feel somehow that we're we're doing something, we're trying to problem solve. And, you know, problem solving is important, but problem solving is kind of open, curious, uh, positively focused thinking. Whereas rumination for the most part is repetitive, unproductive, and negative. So we might think that we're trying to learn from our mistakes by thinking and thinking and thinking about something. Sometimes people, and then this might be a hard thing for some people to hear, but sometimes people ruminate on purpose because the rumination can help to maintain a depressed mood. And I know this sounds contrary to what most people would think, but sometimes we engage in self-sabotage and there can actually be secondary gains to maintaining a depressed mood because it might keep us from facing challenges in our life or risking failure or even success. And by being trapped within our own heads, we're not engaging with our life. That's a difficult concept for some people to explore, but I think there's some truth there. We might engage in rumination because we're trying to motivate ourselves, And if our thinking is focused on problem solving and looking for possibilities rather than negative rumination, it can motivate us. But when we make the mistake of trying to motivate ourselves with shame and guilt, it actually tears down our self-esteem. I think we also have to look at our metacognitive beliefs. If we believe that overthinking and rumination is going to help us, then we're going to do that. And many people just don't know how to stop. And I think that's where the hopeful part comes in. So how do we stop rumination? The first step in stopping rumination or reducing it is to become aware of it. You have to start to name it to tame it, so to speak. When you can recognize that you're stuck in rumination, then you can do something about it. For some people, not all, uh, thought-stopping techniques work. Kind of catching yourself stuck in repetitive loops of thinking and telling yourself, just stop it. Stop, 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 stop. I know where this takes me. I go down that rabbit hole and I catastrophize and I don't want to do that. And distracting yourself into something else can shift you out of the rumination. Now, thought stopping doesn't work for everybody. And distraction is not a very good long-term coping skill, but it's actually a really good short-term coping skill. Another way to think about it is what we call thought diffusion, creating some psychological distance between you and your thoughts or your ruminations. So rather than telling yourself to stop thinking a particular thought, you tell yourself, hmm, that's interesting. I notice that I'm having that thought. Rather than, oh my God, this is what's happening. It's like, oh, that's interesting. I'm having that thought. And I've had that thought before. Well, that, that's interesting. And you start to create a little bit of distance between you and your thoughts. Practicing mindfulness can be very, very helpful in shifting into this kind of awareness because you start to recognize that you can't control the first thought that pops into your mind, but with some mindful awareness, you can take more control over the next thought and the next thought. One metacognitive exercise that I like is to notice the rumination and decide to postpone it. Just decide that, you know what, I'm not going to worry about that right now. And you distract yourself and you focus on something else. When you recognize that those initial trigger thoughts are actually very brief, and if you don't engage with them, they often just leave. It's the engaging with them, the latching on to them that keeps them trapped in your mind. So distraction can actually be a very good short-term coping skill. And choose not to entertain that thought process. Often you might have to do that repeatedly, catching yourself over and over again, redirecting yourself to the present moment. That's what I think of as worrying mindfully. You know, many people go through their day and just whatever they're doing, whether it's work, taking care of the kids, doing the laundry or whatever, they're also in the back of their mind kind of worrying about stuff. 
I think it's actually a much more productive way to address it, to decide that I'm going to actually be present while I'm doing all those other things. And maybe I'll set aside 30 minutes in the day and I'm going to sit there and just worry. And that's all I'm going to do is just worry about that one particular thing. Something I've noticed when people actually take that approach is that they start to wonder why it was so important in the first place. And they start to realize how unproductive worrying about it is and that I actually have a better quality of life if I can let go of some of that worry. And I know these tips and tricks sound very easy, but they're very difficult to put into practice. But if you do put them into practice, it can make a big difference. You can prove to yourself that you have some control over your own mind and your own thoughts. Aside from taking practice and developing mindful awareness to begin with, there has to be a desire to, to get better. And you have to practice those skills because change happens when you have awareness. Awareness on its own is a necessary but not sufficient element. So once you develop the awareness of your own thoughts and you have some skills, some tools that you can apply, when you start adopting new behaviors, that's when things start to change. If the videos are helpful, I encourage you to like and subscribe, sign up for notifications. We'll let you know when there's more coming out. And until the next time, take care of yourself and take care of one another.